I'm going to start to add a dialog card exercise here, interactive content from the add a activity menu here in Moodle. Um, that brings up the familiar kind of editing interface. I could search for dialog cards, but I've used it recently, so it's near the top of the list and I can choose that. First of all, I want to give it give this specific activity a title and then a heading and um, think about these carefully. It's sometimes a good idea to just put these in quickly, uh, create your dialog cards or indeed any other activity type in H5P and then revisit this at the end and ensure that your instructions and your titles are clear and relevant. Uh, there is a mode option here. I'm going to mention that a little bit later. I'm going to leave it in the normal mode for now, which is the default. And then we want to give uh, learners a clear task description. This should be as clear as possible, and it may vary depending on what mode you have selected. I can now begin to add my dialog cards. The first one's there. It's default, always shows the first one. And so you can enter the text for the particular first card. I have images and other resources prepared already. So I'm going to put in the answer. I am going to add here a photograph of a bee. And of course, I can edit that image if I need to crop it. And I would always add the appropriate copyright information if that's been taken from elsewhere. I need to be careful with the alternate text not to give the answer away. If I actually put the word B in here, then users could see it. Um, next, I add the audio file. Dialogue cards are unusual and pretty cool in that you can attach audio here. You can attach audio either from a file that you've prepared, I've got one there, or you can reference an audio clip on YouTube. Again, I would obviously edit the copyright information and then I can put some tip text in, uh, tip text that will appear on the front of the dialogue card to begin with and also some tip text or information text that will appear on the card once it's turned over. So that's my first card added. I can then just continue to build these up. Um, I'm going to add the audio file here straight away. Uh, in this case, I've got an audio file of a humpback whale, which I'm going to find. Um, I'm using both MP3 and WAV WAV files here. You may need to test this out with different browsers or the mobile app or whatever method you're going to use or your learners are going to use to access this to ensure that they can actually play those different audio files. Uh, MP3, MP4, probably the, the widest compatibility, uh, but WAV also, and you can actually upload multiple files as a as a kind of fallback. So if the first type, the first format doesn't play, the WAV file doesn't play, then the MP3 file would play instead. So that's worth doing. Obviously it's more work in terms of preparation. So again, just moving through the setup, making sure we haven't given away the answer in the alternate text, because that will show if the user hovers their mouse in the browser over that image. And then again, some text to display in the in the tool like in the tip icon both before we turn over the dialogue card and after we turn over the dialogue card so you're probably getting a feel now for what this will look like so i'm just going to add another image here to finish this off this time it's a photograph of a humpback whale add that in there are some uh advanced sort of settings here or behavioral settings and these vary from activity to activity so in this case i have you know options that are relevant to dialogue cards so i'm going to uncheck the retry button check a couple of the other options and then move down and save that 
So that will then appear. We can see the text that we've added, the titles and so on, the information about the activity. And then the first dialogue card there is a B. Uh, we've got the tip that we added. We've got the audio file. And then when we're ready, we can turn over the card to see what the correct answer is. And again, we also have some tip text there. We can delete that second image. It is possible to use the dialogue cards as a primarily audio option. So now I don't have any images in the dialogue cards. I just have the audio and that makes it a little bit different. So we could perhaps see this being used uh, quite specifically for things like language training. Earlier on, we mentioned that the dialogue card has two modes, the normal mode and a repetition mode. So let's switch to repetition and we will see, let's just refresh the information, that now, as well as the audio and the turn and the tooltip, we actually have extra options here as we move through the exercise. So as I take a guess, uh, was I right? Yep, I got that one right. Um, let me think, did I get this one right? No, this one I actually got wrong. And that will then feed through into a summary where we can see how we've actually done. So this idea of repetition is that I can now go back, try again, Okay, this time, listen to the audio, did I get it right? Yes, I did. Listen to the audio, did I get it right? Yes, I did. Fantastic, I have now improved my score. So this is the idea of the repetition. It's more of a, of a drill with feedback on the, on the grade or the score that we've actually got there. And it is worth mentioning, if I just come back here, make sure that I'm on the uh, repetition mode, it is worth noting that behavioral settings here have now changed because some behaviors are appropriate to one mode and not the other so it's worth noting in h5p that these things may change sometimes uh, not immediately obvious so always worth playing around changing things seeing how that affects and now as you can see i don't have to turn the card over to actually say, yeah, I know that one. So I can click on, yeah, I got this right. Yeah, I got this right. I've got a super fast way of moving through this activity. So not always obvious, but very worthwhile checking those behavioral settings.